Hello everyone, this is Eugene Violet speaking. I know it's a little late, but I have finally reached 2,000 subscribers! Yeah! It may be kind of strange that I'm doing this special right now, considering how I didn't even do one for my 1,000 subscriber special, or when I reach 1,000 subscribers. And it's mainly because I was very busy during that time and so I didn't really have time to make such a video and so I decided to make it a point that when I reach 2,000 subscribers I will make something special for you guys and so here we are You know it's kind of weird that just less than two years ago I was pretty much still stuck in like 100 plus subscribers Now it's been boosted up to like thousands I never would have thought that I would reach this amount knowing like how many years I've been on YouTube and so yeah I really have to thank you guys for that and for the longest time I thought to myself what on earth should I do for this 2000 subscriber special could I could be doing something else like reacting to my older videos or like doing some crazy shit and all that sort of stuff but this is what I came up with and that is to showcase you guys some of the newer DVDs anime DVDs that I've collected which are on my shelf which has been showing in my previous videos but I haven't really showcased to you guys I actually made a similar video to this like uh, a few uh, like last year actually and there should be a link a card at the top right hand corner should be up here in the video right now and I would highly recommend you guys to check it out I haven't shown my face that time yet but I did go into depth of the different anime DVDs that I got and why I like them and all that sort of stuff. And for the anime DVDs that I have, I have this policy of purchasing shows that I really enjoy. So for everything that I'm about to show you, they are shows, they are anime that I really personally enjoy. You may have shows that you agree with me, but you may also have those that you disagree with me, which there are a few controversial ones that will pop out in this um, bunch that I'm about to uh, showcase you guys. And so without further delay, I'm gonna go get those DVDs, so just hang on for a few seconds. Okay, that's <laughs> quite the huge bunch that I got right now. <laughs> I think I got like 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh shoot, 11 anime to go through. Well, better make this quick. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be separating these DVDs into different batches of where I bought them and when I bought them and that would be helpful. And also I'll be going from the ones that I uh, bought the most, um, the earliest of the lot to the most recent ones so that is kind of a good flow going on right there and so let's begin all right let's start off with the first two now these first two I got them from Malaysia and I think I got them last year I'm not too sure and for the first one it's I'm gonna have to thank Arcada from Glass Reflection once again that man has been so helpful in recommending me shows that I just end up really enjoying and for his pick of the best anime of 2015, Shirobako. Yes, this is probably one of my favorite shows by PA Works. I did say that Sakura Quest is also one of my favorites and that's basically because PA Works seems to have a knack for turning seemingly ordinary stories, seemingly ordinary events in real life and just making them into some of the most interesting shows to watch like the same goes for Shirobako focusing on an anime studio and people working in an anime studio the process of making an anime and even with that it's probably one of the most engaging anime that I've ever seen I wouldn't say that it's 100% realistic but considering how the different threats and situations that the characters get put into they seem to be able to get out of them quite easily it's just so freaking engaging I managed to finish this show within like a few days after I started it I just could not stop watching it and you know the animation it may not be the most action-packed anime obviously but it has a pretty decent animation so that's a plus too and as we look into the uh, box itself like, okay we have it right here is Shirobako is it different from the other one which it should be <laughs> and I also noticed like at the back the 
synopsis is written in three different languages in uh, English, Malay, and Chinese. So Bahasa, Malaysia, and Zhongwen. That's interesting. Even the subtitles are in three different languages. And looking in the inside, there's two discs. Is that really? Yeah, apparently two discs. The two discs in there. They both have a similar art style, which makes me wonder is this. I highly doubt this is a real copy. I feel like this may be bootleg. And I didn't even get this from like a flea market or anything like this. I got this from an actual DVD store. I was thinking that, you know, I'm over there. I want to buy something, buy an anime DVD. And so I managed to find this one. So I managed to get it. So now I have a copy of Shirobako. And unless, of course, you may get irritated with the excessive amount of dialogue and all that, that's probably one of the only reasons I could see people not enjoying this show. Other than that, I guarantee it's a worthwhile experience. Definitely go check this out if you haven't already. All right, and for the next one, we have <laughs> something which I can guarantee is almost certainly fake. It's not a real copy, but what the heck, I, like I said, I wanted to buy something while I was back in Malaysia, and I've already talked about this anime to death a few times already, and still remaining one of my favorites from that season, it is Kuzu no Honkai. I think this is probably one of the most controversial ones that I have out of the lot. I remember having so much confrontation with people just because I said that I freaking love this anime. This, I still stand by my point that this is my favorite anime from winter of 2017. It's about this, um, uh, these two characters right here, the, main, the, boy, the boy and the girl, and they each have uh, people that they really like, but the people that they like end up getting together instead. You know, the, the one that the boy likes got with the one that the girl likes. And so it kind of triggered this very sorrowful feeling among those two. And they decide to basically have each other as replacements for lovers. Which I find is so freaking fascinating. It's one of the most daring shows that I've seen from the romance genre. And that ending, it was... I did not expect that ending at all. And, uh, and the animation by Lurche, freaking amazing. You know, this this was the start of me really loving Lurche from 2017. Lurche freaking killed it for me in 2017. Now as we look here and yeah, kind of a bad sign here. The box art is the same as the one that's in uh, on the front cover. Three different languages and all. And with Malay, English and Chinese again. And yeah, have we look inside? <laughs> it's all black inside. Yeah, that, that is not a good sign. That is just one disc right there and a whole black background. That is clearly a sign that is not a good copy or not a real copy but what the heck you know if I eventually find a real copy if they do eventually make one that is I might just get it because I do not really like this cover cover I do think it's a very satisfying and worthwhile watch but you really need to check it for yourself and see whether or not you like it some people really like it and some people really hate it all right we'll move on to the next batch and this one we have three of them now i got these from australia right here and i got these like during a black friday actually they introduced this black friday here in australia and i was like you know what maybe i'll go check it out and see and i got these from a little store called jb hi-fi and surprise surprise they were giving discounts for anime dvds so i was like woohoo so for the first one is from a studio which again i have been talking about and praising about non-stop. This anime is one of the factors for my ever-growing love for this anime studio, Studio Bones, and that is Soul Eater. As, as you can see, it is the complete series collection, all freaking 51 episodes as stated right here. That is amazing. It has like eight discs in them and already a huge improvement in the 
interior compared to the others. We have um, Maka, I hope that's her name, <laughs> Maka. I haven't watched Soul Eater in a while, that's why. Um, there, and then there's So, there's Tsubaki, there's Black Star. There's the two girls, I can't really remember their names. <laughs> Sorry about that, that's Def the Kid. There's Steins, and then there's Maka's father. Interesting, interesting. I love this different this uh, art that they have. Let me see what they have here. They have soundtrack, oh, okay. They actually have the English and Japanese uh, audio in there. Kind of cool. This show, I haven't even talked about the synopsis. It's about these group of um, students in this Death Academy, I guess. They're meisters and weapons. You know, some of these characters actually turn into uh, weapons, which the uh, meisters will utilize and defeat evil doers, basically. And if you get enough souls, you may eventually become a witch or an all-powerful being and all that. And it does get pretty dark too, you know. This is one of those shows which really surprises me for how dark it can get. Just the way that Studio Bones is able to balance out the different genres from being like very comedic, very action-packed, and then, you know, even throwing in some romance elements and then getting to like really thrilling and dramatic and all that sort of crap. It's a really well-balanced show. That's one of the reasons why I really love Soul Eater. The big problem with it though is, like many others, the ending of this anime. And yeah, I'm not going to deny that the ending was pretty shit, okay? But other than that, everything else about this anime was absolutely amazing. I had a freaking great blast watching this show. And just the animation by Studio Bones is probably one of the better ones that I've seen by them. Unless you guys have a problem with really bad endings, I really encourage you guys to watch this. Alright, next up we have an interesting case. It's similar to the uh, Shin Sekayori uh, DVD that I got. This separated into two different boxes and compiled into one bigger outer shell. Now for this one, it's probably one of my favorites by this studio. One of the greatest character shows that I've seen in a long time. And that is Kokoro Kanek. Yes, this anime is just freaking amazing, I swear. Focusing on five different characters, uh, five students who unfortunately get into some commotion with this mysterious being called Heart Seat and then they have to work with each other and then help each other out in order to uh, overcome these things that this Heart Seat guy throws at them and it's a really great way to showcase character and really shows great character development showing how these characters actually are their raw emotions, their raw uh, personalities and all that and just how they overcome them by helping each other out. It's such a great show because of that, okay? And this one is being made by Silverlink and it's one of the few times that Silverlink has actually really impressed me. Oh, okay, I see. They went with this, this is the first one, this is the first part apparently because this one has the 13 episodes as listed at the back. I don't think you'll be able to see those wordings. The first 13 episodes, does this have... Oh, okay. It has English and Japanese. Okay, I've never heard of the... Well, actually, it may be a false dub. It may be a fan dub, but I heard that from YouTube and the dubbing wasn't really that good. We have these on the characters that are showcased here. Two discs in here, is it? There's two discs. Mm, yeah, apparently two this for this one, and then another one should be just one this. Ah, oh, okay, there's the three girls in there. I didn't showcase the other one, did I? Okay, that's the one this. Okay, the four episodes. And then this is the first set right here. Very sorry, I, I don't really remember all the names of the characters, but I freaking love all these characters though. Okay, and, and I've always been very curious as to why they separated these four episodes from the original 13 episodes because this was a great addition to the anime series itself. Focusing on that one girl, what's her name? God damn it. 
I'll probably put the name up on the screen somewhere, okay? But focusing on that one character and just really seeing her true personality and all that sort of crap. The way that these characters are able to overcome these situations, like I've said many times, considering the shit that these characters are being put into, if they are still able to get along with each other after all that, they are definitely the best of friends. Like seriously, that is some hardcore determination and hardcore relationship that I see from these characters. It's so amazing to watch. It does have some supernatural elements to it, obviously. This is probably one of the more obscure titles that I have, but definitely a very worthwhile experience. You know, I highly recommend you guys to check this out if you haven't already. All right, and the last one of the three is one that I completed not too long ago, actually. I absolutely fell in love with this anime. Like, one of the better cyberpunk animes that I've seen. That is Psychopaths. This is just season one, which is the better season. And probably the only season, which you, I would recommend you guys to check out. The second season, I wouldn't say that it ruined Psycho Pass, but it's definitely no way, nowhere near as good as the first season. This one has four discs, and it's probably the first one that has like MA15 plus rating. <laughs> and I can agree with that, it does get really darn gruesome and really freaking dark as well. But it's such an amazing thriller. It's about this Okay, imagine this uh, society in the future whereby people's risk status, I should say, something like that, whereby how much risk does a character or a person presents to the society is being rated by this system which has been set up by the government. And based on that system, they will determine whether or not you will commit a crime or not before you even do it. Having such a system already brings up a lot of different controversies, a lot of different flaws to the system because it may not be 100% accurate and I could see that from the first episode itself because some of these characters may end up doing something really bad but they don't seem to be a risk to the system so they get a pass. We follow this um, group of police officers so to speak. They take control of making sure that the safety of the society is being ensured and this anime is being made by Production IG. It's probably one of my favorites by Production IG. They're a very great watch, a very thrilling action packed anime with a lot of thriller suspense elements to it. Tackling this whole dilemma of whether or not we should 100% rely on a system that may or may not be accurate. They have English and Japanese uh, uh, dub as well. For those of you who really enjoy a good thriller and a good cyberpunk anime, this is probably one of my top recommendations for you guys. Okay, so let's move on to the next batch. Now for the next three, these are also being bought from Australia. But I got these from a little store called Sanity here in Australia. And for the first one, we have one which can undoubtedly be considered a classic. Many people would consider this to be one of the best anime of all time, you know, along with like Neon Genesis Evangelion and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, this one also being praised for its awesome English dub. That is. Cowboy Bebop. Yes, I actually got this. I'm not 100% sure what this is all about though because it has like a remix uh, complete collection. I haven't actually taken a look at what it's all about. It has commentaries by Japanese and English voice and production stuff. And again, it has the English and Japanese uh, dubbing. I don't know if this one is the Funimation dub, which I keep hearing a lot of good things about, but I wouldn't doubt that this would end up having a really good English dub. It really fits this sort of anime too. If you guys are already familiar with Cowboy Bebop, you should already know that it's about a bunch of um, space bandits what do you call it? Space bandits? Space bounty hunters, that's what I should say. Gathering up um, bounty money by capturing criminals out in space and all that sort of stuff. That's the setting, okay? People are out in different parts of the solar system and then these 
four characters mainly. We focus on their adventures and all the different scenarios that they get into. And for the most part, it's a very episodic sort of anime whereby each episode doesn't really connect with each other. The thing I have about this anime though is that while I really love this anime as well, I don't feel like every episode was very satisfying. That's my major gripe with this anime. It does have its really awesome ones like even considering how people keep saying that episode 5 is when the anime starts to get really interesting and all, I was hooked from the first episode. Like, I loved the first episode. The animation for this anime, for its time, is just mind-blowing to me. Like, what the heck, Studio Sunrise? This is probably one of my favorites by Sunrise, probably only being topped by Code Geass which I have mentioned about in my previous video as well. I will agree with many people that the soundtrack, again, this is one of the anime where I actually paid attention to the soundtrack because it was so prominent and I really enjoy the whole jazzy feel that it has to it too. And the different situations it does get, it has a really good mix of different genres as well. It does get really funny, it's very action based and it's also, it also gets really dramatic as well. I haven't actually checked what's inside, it's six dish. that's quite amazing, you know, for <laughs> giving out the different colors and then showcasing the characters behind them. Um, there's some extra characters over here, there's the dog and then there's the, um, this one is kind of a char later character that appears in the show. So I highly recommend you guys to check this out. You know, even if you may end up not liking it, just watch it so that you can be on topic with other people. Definitely go check this out. All right, for the next few, we have, we're entering into more obscure territories, I guess. For this next one, I don't know if it's really obscure yet, but it's the next one by Silverlink, which I really freaking enjoy. And funny thing too, I heard about this anime and really wanted to check this out because I did make this reaction video on Otaku Lyrics 501 and people were mentioning about this anime and saying that it was really good. And so I ended up checking it out and I freaking loved it. Chivalry of a Failed Knight. And the Japanese title was what? Rokudai? something something I can't really remember. I already made a video talking about this anime in specifics and I would say that it's probably the best edgy anime that I've seen to this day actually because it does have very similar aspects to other edgy fantasy shows and all that sort of stuff but the way that they tweak things a little and just make the characters a tad bit more different and stand out from so many others is one thing that I really give praise to this anime. It's funny to say this but those different um, things that they did for those edgy scenes are probably the most prominent and most important highlights of this show because it just showcases some more interesting characters than what we're normally used to in these sort of shows. Even the main couple of this anime is just freaking amazing, okay? Episode 4 just freaking blew me away. I did not expect the progress to be as fast as it was. But I haven't talked about the synopsis and this one is basically about this group of people called Blazers and they have these magical ability some sort and they kind of fight in tournaments and all that sort of crap. Just pretty standard fair sort of synopsis you would say I guess but the way that they presented it the, the main highlight is just on the relationship of the main couple of this anime and that's what really kept me engaged about this anime. They made so many great improvements and tweaks to it that it just becomes such a good worthwhile watch okay and plus Silverlink did a really good job and so bright and colorful and all that sort of crap so again with the MA15 plus I think yeah Cowboy Bebop was MA15 plus as well let's see if they ooh they have English and Japanese as well okay on the inside we have the main character um Stella I remember yeah Stella and then we have the sister of the main character Okay, and then we have the other character. I think she's the president 
um, if I'm not mistaken. A great find, you know, I didn't manage to find this for most times when I go to these DVD stores and all that, but yeah, this was, this is definitely one of my more proud uh, collections, the ones that I am so glad that I managed to get a solid copy of it, you know, and unless you guys are really not into etchy and all those fan service sort of thing i highly recommend you guys to check this out it has one of the more interesting couples in a fantasy anime the ending itself is just a worthwhile reward for your time watching this anime okay and then the last one from this batch and this is probably the most obscure anime that i have from this entire bunch right here. It's from a very well-known and well-acclaimed studio too, but for some reason, this anime hardly gets mentioned, but I freaking loved it. That is Tamako Market. For this anime, I'm gonna have to give mention to Misty Cronexia. He was the reason I found out about this anime, and I freaking loved it. It's probably one of my favorite um, slice of life, cute girls doing cute things anime. Okay, the way that it was done, it's only like 12 episodes, 12 episodes was it? Uh, yeah, 12 episodes. Within those 12 episodes, it was able to do so much, focusing on the main character, Tamako, obviously. Okay, Tamako, and then one day she finds this parrot, this guy right here, okay. But this this parrot guy you i i was thinking that i was going to really dislike this guy but holy crap i freaking love um what's his name again mochiaki <laughs> or the japanese name of his Mo mochi matsui a great addition of to the cast of tamako market surprised to say that this is one of my top five favorite anime by Kyoto Animation. The only other shows from Kyoto Animation that I probably like more than Tamako Market would be um, Planet, Sound Euphonium, and another one which I will mention later on. Tamako Market is just such a an adorable, it's such a short but yet fulfilling look at the lives of these characters in this community of a marketplace make us really connect with the characters while showcasing these cute characters doing a whole bunch of stuff and it does get pretty funny at times too and then we have this, the two characters we have Tamako and one of her friends which uh, again I can't remember her name but yeah I really wish that Shiori was in here because there is this character called Shiori which is my favorite character in the show because he's just freaking adorable. Episode 3 was just freaking amazing. I just love episode 3 because of Shiori. It's a very unknown anime, even though it's being made by Kyoto Animation. Not a lot of people talk about it, but I will say that it's one of the better shows by them. Okay, and so if you're looking for a nice, comfortable time watching people in their daily lives, I recommend you guys to check this one out. It may prove to be something worth your time. Okay, and now we're finally in the final batch. Now these, I managed to get them just a few weeks ago, actually a few months ago. It was probably because of the end of financial year. That's why there was discounts on anime DVDs. So, really. Now for the first one is something which is of uh, relevance right now because one of the spin-offs is currently airing probably one of the best time travel shows in general that I've ever seen anywhere. That is of course Steins Gate. Steins Gate, holy crap, freaking amazing. It's such a great way that they tackle and handle how time travel works in this anime. I love the way that they handle that concept. And you know, if you haven't heard of Steins Gate, it's basically about Okabe, uh, Rintaro Okabe. And he leads this, he leads this lab that's in his apartment. He basically comes up with all these weird gadgets and one day, he managed to successfully make a time machine or some sort, something like that. Along with his ability to actually recall what he seen from a previous timeline, he's able to pass it on to a different timeline when things change and all that sort of crap. It does get really darn chilling, I, uh, really darn thrilling I would say. The whole thing about this 
ever looming, ever present uh, threat that may be present because of the use of the time machine and all that really keeps me invested. And I guarantee if you guys do find the show being kind of slow, it does pick up. It does pick up around the halfway point or something like that, if I remember correctly. But definitely, if you want to watch Steins Gate Zero, you definitely should watch Steins Gate first because it gets you really invested in these characters, the chemistry between the characters, especially the main two characters, Okabe and Kurisu, is just amazing to watch, you know? One of the better couples in anime, White Fox really freaking pulled it off with the animation and all the uh, structure of this anime. Okay, so we have the different characters. We have Kurisu, we have Mayuri, we have, um, what's her name? A, it starts with F. God damn it, I just watched uh, freaking Steins Gate Zero too. That's Suzuha, okay, Ferris, Ferris, that's her name. This is one of the more highly acclaimed anime up there with like Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, uh, but not as popular, I would say. But if you haven't checked it out, definitely give this a shot so that even if you end up not really enjoying it, at least again, you have something which you can talk about in the anime community. Okay, a little update. I just checked the Tamako Market on uh, this and it also has English. Holy crap, everything that I've showcased right now has English in it, except from the ones that I got from Malaysia, that is. Okay, for the next one out of this three, we have the other show which I mentioned that I probably like as much or more than Tamako Market. It's probably one of the craziest shows that I had the pleasure of watching. And it's of course, Nichi Joe. Holy crap, I finally got my hands on this show. You know, at first, I wasn't really too fond of this show because of how ridiculous and loud the characters could get. But after watching it a while, I find that it's one of these shows that I find myself wanting to go back and watch more often, just because it's just a lot of fun. This anime doesn't really have a plot to it, I guess. Mainly focuses on two perspectives. One focuses on these three girls and they go about their daily lives. And the other focusing on this young professor and a robot girl. It may be called Nichijo Ordinary Life, but considering how extreme these characters may get into, the situations that they get into in their ordinary life, it just gets epic and ridiculous. And it just becomes so freaking enjoyable because of that. I'm pretty sure you've seen a lot of clips of this anime, you know, even in AMVs and all that, because of how ridiculous it can get, you know, it's just a really fun anime to watch. And again, with Kyoto Animation, the same with Tamako Market, they pulled it off with the animation. This show is just spectacularly animated, okay? As simple as the art may be, it's just full of life, you know? It's just full of life. Kind of similar to how Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid is. You know, the art style is similar, but a lot more going on with this show than that one. And there's 26 episodes of this shit too, so... Okay, so we have um, Mio, we have Yuno, is that her name? God damn it. And then we have the Hakase and... Um, oh, God damn it, what's her name again? I should know her name. Mm. Okay, the robot girl, okay. I will, come, I will pop up. My uh, in my head soon enough, I guess. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have an English dub. So if you haven't checked this one out already and you are looking for a exceptionally good comedy, I highly recommend this to you guys. It's probably one of the funniest shows that I've seen. Visually, the most creative when it comes to comedy, you know, it goes so out of its way to make all these jokes land. It's amazing. Oh yeah, of course, her name is Nano. But in any case, moving on to the final one that I'm gonna showcase, and hopefully my camera battery doesn't die out. This is one which is another pretty obscure title, I would say. Not too many people really talk about this, but based on the synopsis that people have been talking about before I watched this show, I was kind of spoiled to what this show, what to expect for this show. I already got really excited. That is School Life or Gakogurashi. This 
is one of my favorites by Lurche before 2017. And yeah, for good reason too. It follows these three, which later becomes four girls, who they seem to be in a um, school club activity, doing all school club things and all that, and then going about their daily lives and all that. And then later you find out that things are not as it seems, you know? They, it's all just an illusion whereby they are actually in a zombie apocalypse. Like, what the heck, man? And I'm gonna say it here and now. I actually like this anime more than High School of the Dead. Mainly because of its difference in tone. Like, High School of the Dead was constantly like just very gruesome, very apocalyptic and dystopian and all that sort of stuff. So it's like, it's a very constant tone, but I feel like school life had this whole shift in tone that it has that makes you kind of not know what to expect from this show. Like maybe they're showcasing a very cutesy, very uh, you know, fluffy scene and all that, but then all of a sudden it could turn out to be all dreadful and all hope is lost and all that sort of crap. It does use that to its advantage. and. That's what I really like about it too. And these characters are just, they're freaking adorable. And also I like seeing them like helping each other out and getting through this zombie apocalypse. Okay, we don't really know what the heck happened and why this zombie apocalypse happened. Similar to High School of the Dead, which god damn it, where is that second season? I do find that what goes on in this anime is just gripping and just, it plays with your emotions and plays with your mind. You don't know what to expect. And if you like that sort of thing, I definitely highly recommend you guys to check this one out. For this one, we have three discs. Okay, we got... Whoa. Okay, that did not work out well. Okay, we have the three main characters, I guess. I'm not even going to attempt uh, trying to name these characters because I don't remember their names at all. Okay, we have the main pink-haired girl. Okay, and then we have the... Um, Twin tail girl and the other long hair girl. Okay, <laughs> that's the best that I can come up with right now. I need to look up a wiki or something in order to get their names. And this has English too. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. Man, most of these have English stuff. Surprising that Nichi Joe doesn't have it. You know, that would have been fun to listen to. And I wonder how they would handle the Salamat Bagi aspect though. <laughs> I was surprised when I heard Salamat Bagi because it's like, hey, is this show being made in Malaysia or something? <laughs> because Salamat Bagi, if you don't know, is good morning in Malay or Indonesian. So yeah, that's the thing. Really great entry by Lurche. You know, the start, probably one of the starts to why I love this studio so much. If you guys haven't checked this out already, it's pretty darn obscure, so you probably might not have heard of it. But if you haven't, and if you're looking for a great horror thriller anime, I highly recommend you guys to check this one out. And yeah, that's the whole bunch of shows that I have right here in showcasing you guys. I'm pretty sure that's facing all the right direction. Yeah, a great stack right here. Uh, probably the beginning of my anime DVD collection. <laughs> it's already piled up pretty darn huge, but I've seen so many videos of people showcasing their shelves and all that, and this is nowhere near as impressive as those guys. Like, holy crap, what the heck? Where the heck do you manage to get all those DVDs? I am kind of jealous, actually. Probably should be attending more anime conventions, but here in Perth, not too much goes on. The only anime convention that I've been to is Mad Fest of 2017. And that hardly had any good shows that I wanted to get and all that. Or maybe it's just because I just managed to get the ones that I thought would be worth getting. My Planet After Story one was probably my more, most worthwhile uh, purchase from that convention. Because I don't think I've seen a Planet After Story DVD from any of the stores that I've been to. What do you guys think about the 11 different animes that I uh, showcase here? And also, you know, if I haven't checked out the other video where I talked about the other anime DVDs that I have, I will put out the card on the top right hand corner of this video right now. And yeah, hopefully you guys go check them out. It's pretty much the same thing except 
uh, without me showing my face yet. And so before you go, let me know in the comment section below what are your favorite anime? Either the ones you feel so in the past or the ones you feel so right now. Anyone will do. Let me know all of that in the comment section below. There may be some anime suggestions that I've never heard of before. And who knows, I might end up really enjoying those anime because of you. But apart from all that, I think it's a good time to end this 2000 subscriber special. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching this video and do stay tuned to the next time of whatever I make. Until next time, bye!